Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks, and I'm here today with set number 71173, Lego Dimension Starter Pack. And 71173 is specifically the Xbox 360 edition. They're mostly the same as far as content though. And this is ages 7 to 14, has 269 pieces, includes one game, one toy pad, three figures, one buildable vehicle, and it retails in the United States for about a hundred dollars. Well, a little bit higher price for a new release video game, and that's a hundred dollars for any of the systems, which include not only the Xbox 360, but also, I believe it's also on the Wii U, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. None of them have any special bonuses to them and pre-order bonuses that I'm aware of as of recording this video, and this also has I feel like it's missing something else. Oh, it was released in 2015, of course. <laughs> so let's take a closer look at first the physical product. So let's start things off with the toy pad itself. This is actually mostly a large Lego build on top of a electronic product, which has studs on it. Now this is how it's made and how you receive it in the package. If you want to see more about that, you can check out the unboxing video on my channel. The rest of this is built on top of a new modified plate. This is just a large plate, which is roughly, I believe it's the, the, the total dimensions would be <laughs> dimensions. Um, the total dimensions would be about 12 by, hmm, I'm going to say 12 by 30, 12 by 24 with this hole cut out and the sides cut off. So it places right over the actual product and you also have everything else surrounding it fit right in. So it makes it look more pleasing and it brings a little bit more of a play element to a physical play element, may I add, to the gaming experience. As you're playing through LEGO Dimensions, the portal itself will have different things on it. When you build it straight out of the box, it shows you the instructions in the box, but also shows you instructions in the game. And you build it into the game, um, and then can place it on top and continue playing the game afterwards. As you complete different levels, you get each of these keystone elements, which are different abilities for you to access at different points in the game. All of these are stored on the back of this when you see it in the initial instructions. So you simply pull these out from the back as they show you in the game and attach them on the front. You also have it attached right here as well. So after that happens, at a later point in the game, you'll have a couple pieces that'll fall apart from the portal itself. Yes, this actual portal is in the game as uh, the interdimensional travel by which our main characters are involved. So you have pieces taken off in the instructions in the game for this and this, and each of these with a bit of rearrangement will allow you to make a new character which was shown in the beginning of the game but then shows up a little later in actual form, Expo. And uh, just give me one moment, I will actually put that together for you. Uh, just getting that one purple piece off the back. It's a little tricky, but it's still a cool little build. It's basically a small robot that has been guiding you throughout the game, uh, helps you learn about the interdimensional travel, uh, it has access to the portal, and knows a lot about the villain in order to help you stop him from his evil plans. That's all you basically need to know, but I get more into the context a little later on about the game. As you're playing the game, you'll have different pieces that you can add on to the portal pad. So you can add these on in different ways and actually have different uses depending on where you put them. Now, the standard portal will have one space in the middle which usually allows you to access things for the toy tag. So if you add something new into the game, it's best to put it here so that the game can read it. Although it can also read it from these other spots, it may instruct you to put it in the center depending on what you're using. Any of these characters can fit along this has three spots and three spots on there. Now, it's important to remember that you can't fit a character sideways on here to try to squeeze extra characters in. 
It has to read the entire circle around the base so that the character can be played in the game. And also applies for any vehicle builds that you have as well. Speaking of which, let's get to those parts right now. The character bases that are included for the starter pack include Gandalf, Batman, and Wildstyle. Each of these are in their respective universes and are not intended to be all from the Lego movie. As we know, yes, they are recognized from the Lego movie, but Gandalf is supposed to be in his own Lord of the Rings world, Batman is supposed to be in the DC world, and Wildstyle is in the Lego movie world. Each of these are buildable figures that you can easily remove from the pack, or from the stands, should I say. You actually do build them in the set as their own bag. I think it's bag number one out of three for this entire starter set. And each of these have their own inscription so that you can recognize who they belong to. So you have one for Gandalf, you have one for Batman, and you have one for Wildstyle. Now, in previous Batman games or games involving Batman, you would have different suits for Batman. That's not necessarily the case for this game, but it's not necessarily crucial for this game. It does have different abilities that Batman can still access while being the standard Batman. Speaking of which, he's actually not standard in that he's been used before in this exact variant. I believe the torso has been used earlier this year in 2015, but this exact combination of his torso and cowl and head have not been made for a Lego set or Lego game at this point. Of course, they are a combination of other ones, but they are pretty nice. For Wildstyle, she is the same version that we've seen in other 2015 LEGO Movie sets, where she has a smirk on one side of her face, and on the other side she has more of an angry look. As far as everything else, it's pretty much the same. However, we do have a new tile added to her, which is on this Relic Detector. And if that sounds familiar, you should, because it's from the LEGO Movie. And if I can give it just a little bit, come on, focus, focus, ignore, ignore the hands in the background. Uh, it's again a little bit, there we go. So there we have actual printing on there that says detecting relic. That's part of one of her abilities in the game. And last but not least, we have Gandalf. I'm actually not a Lord of the Rings fan and aware of most of the movie and books but I do enjoy playing this character in-game. And as far as a minifigure, he is much, much the same from other versions of Gandalf that we've had before. And he does not have an alternate face though, but he does have alternate printing on the back of him. And I believe Batman does as well. So they look pretty nice for the figures, and again, I'll get more into the gameplay components a little later. We also have, as our last bit, the Batmobile. In the game, they instruct you to build this first with the in-game instructions. They don't have them as a printout when you buy this in the box. But as a model, this looks pretty nice. It does have a remarkable resemblance to the 2015 version of the Batmobile, and it's pretty nice for the way it's built. I'd like to point out that it does have a few new elements to it. Let's see if I can take off part of it to show you that it has a new wheel element. It has a new wheel axle element. There's a one by two modified plate that can easily attach to a small wheel. So that is something you'll find not only in this set but also in other LEGO Dimensions packs and it's actually a really nice piece to get. One of the newer pieces from this set in total, in fact. There are several others. If you check out the instructions online, you'll find out more about that. Speaking of the instructions, let's go to them to rebuild this into other Batmobile models. When you bring Batman into the LEGO Dimensions game, you'll be able to unlock the ability to build the Batmobile. The Batmobile is pretty basic in its play in the game and has an ability where it just runs really fast. It does some of the basic functions to get it through the storyline and it can do things such as run on a treadmill, which is something any vehicle can do. It can also run through enemies that are stunned, so that's important for some of the boss battles. And it can also run through various objects in different worlds, so that you can collect any uh, LEGO currency, in-game currency, 
for uh, running over that object. It usually depends on what object you run over, but it's something that normally would be hit by a character. So, this is actually a pretty basic model, and as mentioned before, it does have a new piece, but let's take a look now and see its second form, which is something you would upgrade later in the game when you have enough currency and upgrade different abilities. This is the Bat Blaster coming up next. Next up, we'll take a look at the Bat Blaster. It's an upgraded version of the Batmobile in which you can use a sonic wave in order to unlock some hidden areas, as they show it on the box. And this one also seems okay for a build. I haven't played it too much in the game as of recording this video, but it seems like a nice little object and probably does everything that the Batmobile does, but even a little better. This is the same exact number of pieces as the Batmobile, so it really shows how unique a model can be in just a different building combination. But next up, we'll take a look at the Sonic Bat Ray, which looks pretty interesting on the box and actually does look different in the game after building it. And the last upgrade we have is the Sonic Bat Ray. This one's a very peculiar looking vehicle. I was very intrigued by the way they built this, not only the Wheels are at different widths, but also at different heights. So you kind of have an angled look if you were to put it on the ground. And yes, these are all buildable, of course. You can even take this part off if you want to. Um, just, you know, very interesting as a physical toy. It still rolls around just like any of the other bat models that we've seen so far. And it actually does have a moving back part to it. In-game, I haven't played it that much, but from what I can tell in the box art, it seems to show a sonic ray effect, like the last build. I don't know if it's any different from it in terms of driving ability or any upgrades. Now, I did want to talk to you guys about the gameplay and the main campaign review, but unfortunately, I don't have enough time for that in this video. I've already talked long enough about the physical toy, so I'm going to wait for another video where I can talk about the Dimensions game itself. This is the actual cartridge. It is rated E10 and up, so it is safe for kids, and it is one to two players as well. It doesn't take a lot of storage space either on consoles. Um, but I would be happy to do another review based on just the gameplay. I'm not sure technologically what's going to happen in terms of if I can show gameplay in the review, or how am I going to be able to edit it in my own editing software. So we'll see how things go and what I can do best to show you what the game is really like, explain a bit of the story, show the different components that the toy pad can really do, because it's really amazing what this can do. Um, to give you quick thoughts, I love the campaign, the levels were amazing, my favorites were Doctor Who, Midway Arcade, uh, I'm trying to remember what the other one was, oh Portal 2, that was a great level too, and how they used the game pad for all of the levels in the game, is phenomenal. It's better than other Toys to Life companies that I've experienced, mostly Disney Infinity. So I'm really happy with the step up that LEGO Dimensions has brought to the Toys to Life video game genre. There's a question here that we have from Instagram. I'm just going to answer this now because I asked people if they wanted to learn a little bit more before I get to the review. So they asked, um, this is Chan Chovan Schnauzer, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. He says... If you don't get the expansion packs, is there still a campaign? Yes. Everything that you can do in this game can be played with everything you see here. All the abilities for completing the basic campaign is there. There are a lot of extra features that would be used uh, or to obtain them. You would have to play with other characters bought separately. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Look forward to the gameplay campaign and maybe its own gameplay series of the bonus hunt where I try to find all the secrets inside of LEGO Dimensions. We'll see you next time with more LEGO videos.